This is Salma Schimmel in Chicago for the Group Room. We're at the 2012 Multidisciplinary Symposium in Thoracic Oncology, which is brought to you by ASTRO, IASLC, ASCO, and the University of Chicago. And we're now joined by Dr. Alicia Sequist from Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center, where she is Assistant Professor of Medicine at the Harvard Medical School. Hello. Hi, thank you for having me. You moderated a session here, and the speakers addressed um, current and evolving methods of genotyping, guidelines for genomic testing for 2012, the cost of routine genotyping, and can we afford it, and the potential impact of large-scale genomic testing on cancer patients and providers. So time won't allow us to break down each one of those topics, but perhaps you can maybe highlight the main themes that you feel viewers uh, need to take away. Really the main takeaway point from the session here in Chicago was just to raise awareness, like you're saying, that molecular testing of cancer patients' tissue is key. It's going to be key to determining which is the best treatment for them, and it may be necessary for them to go on clinical trials. And so when they're undergoing the biopsy and they're actually having an invasive procedure, to have a piece of their cancer tumor taken out. They, everyone, patient, doctor, person doing the procedure, pathologist, needs to be on the same page about what, what they are doing and how to use this precious resource best. And how to enhance greater collection capabilities, yeah. core needle biopsy when possible. Yeah. The tissue is so precious and lung cancer is perhaps different and some of the other cancers where tissues more readily available. Right. So it's, it's ironic maybe that this um, breakthrough in molecular understanding came right after a real evolution in smaller and smaller biopsies being done for, for biopsy in the lung for safety purposes. So fine needle aspirations, you know, were getting smaller and smaller and pathologists were figuring out how to make a diagnosis with less and less tissue and then all of a sudden this revolution in genomics where we really need more tissue so that we can look for EGFR, we can look for ALK, we can look for ROS, we can look for you know all these targetable mutations. And what about cost? So I think cost is an ever-changing uh, topic and um, you know there's lots of reforms going on and we won't get into politics right now but I think it is hard you know even if you take a snapshot in time the cost of doing these from region to region in the country can really vary, even from hospital to hospital. But in order to keep costs down in the future and to think about um, how are we going to make this feasible for every patient, I think we do have to develop new technologies that look not at one mutation and then look at another if that one's negative and then another, but what's called multiplexing, testing for multiple mutations all at once, you know, in an efficient mm -hmm. way. and. Um, and there are many groups that are looking at what's the best technique for multiplexing, but I think that ultimately that will be the most efficient and cost efficient way to do it. We understand what the guidelines are now for the mutational testing in lung cancer. Are there further guidelines coming or almost through 2012, but where do you see new guidelines expanding into the next year? Any of the guidelines that are out now may even already be somewhat out of date because in lung cancer recently it seems like every six to twelve months there is a new breakthrough with a new type of cancer um, identified molecularly and, and this past year for example everyone has been very excited about translocations in ROS1 mm -hmm. um, and, and their response to drugs so I think these guidelines for what's important to test is going to change quickly from year to year. To the advocate community what would you like to see happen? What would be your vision if you could align and unify the advocacy organizations to help you deliver your message, reach patients, and raise awareness of the understanding of genomics? I think there's a couple of key messages that advocates and just the public in general should know about lung cancer. One is what a big problem it is because people for a variety of reasons don't talk about lung cancer and they don't realize what a big problem it is, how it can affect anyone, uh, regardless of their gender, regardless of their smoking history, regardless of their age. 
um, and how how many advances have come apart, come together in the last couple of years uh, in lung cancer. I think it's important for people to realize that that has been done on minimal funding. Lung cancer is often underfunded compared to some other cancers. Um, and I think that it's very important for patients who are newly diagnosed with lung cancer to understand that almost no matter what their specific situation is, they should have their tumor genotyped. As you were talking, I was thinking there's a certain irony. For such a long time, there's been the stigma of lung cancer. And I find the irony that suddenly lung cancer is almost becoming a model of progress on this genomic level and what it means for all other cancers. And it's like so far removed from the stigma where this disease that's had such negative associations mm -hmm. is now the disease with one of the brightest lights in oncology. I think as a field we're quite proud of the um, path that we're forging for all of cancer patients, um, but the stigma still really affects us in many ways, particularly in getting equal funding for our research. Mm -hmm. And so I think the more that the general public is aware of the degree of lung cancer, in this country, more people die from lung cancer than any other cancer in the United States and, in fact, in the world every year. Um, it's important. Because more women die from lung cancer than breast cancer. Dr. Leisha Sequest, Massachusetts General Hospital Cancer Center and Assistant Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School, a medical oncologist, joining us here at this multidisciplinary meeting in Chicago reporting on genomics. Thank you so much. I thank you.